you all for coming out to the weigh-in. How about a hand on Octagon Girl, Vanessa Hansen, our managing director for Australia, New Zealand, and of course, Canada is Tom Wright. One of the best matchmakers in the world, Sean Shelby. Brian Stan is here. And of course, the one and only Burt Watson bringing up the rear. Mickey McDonald in the building as well. All right, let's get going. We begin with a prelim. It is yours at UFCFightPass.com in the Bantamweight division. Pedro, the young Punisher Munoz versus Chiron J. Reezy Sanders. Gerard Sanders has done some special things over the course of his career, like becoming All-American at the 2003 NCAA tournament. But if he steps on the scale at 135 pounds, that'll be a true accomplishment. I was his teammate when he couldn't make 141 hardly. If he does this, it'll be the first time he's done it since he was a 17-year-old senior. And guys, when did his name change from Jared to Gerard? Pedro Munoz eats, sleeps, breathes Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. At the age of 13, he's seen Hoist Gracie fight in the UFC, and ever since then, he's been hooked. He sports an 11-1 record. He's a two-time no-gi Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champ, and he loves the guillotine choke. Jared, watch out for your neck. Tomorrow, college football returns as Iowa State takes on 21st-ranked Oklahoma State on Fox Sports 1. Then two unbeaten teams match up as Oklahoma battles TCU on Fox, followed by Michigan squaring off against Rutgers on Big Ten Network, while Arizona State squares off against 16th-ranked USC on Fox. Coverage begins at noon Eastern on Fox and Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. One sixty nine for Matt Dwyer. And his opponent is Albert Two Menoff. Albert Einstein Temenoff was actually a student before he became a fighter. He has a bachelor's degree from the University of Russia, Moscow. Now, he started training MMA as a means of self-defense before becoming a pro back in 2010. for Albert Tumenov. Welcome back to the desk. The next four fighters appear on tomorrow's prelims on Fox Sports 1 or on Fox Sports 2 if baseball runs long. Chris Kalaitis takes on Patrick Hollihan at flyweight. Kalaitis up first. Tomorrow, UFC Fight Night returns to Fox Sports 1 with a great night of bouts, including a welterweight showdown between second-ranked Rory McDonald and ninth-ranked Tarek Safadine. The action starts at 8.30 p.m. Eastern tomorrow only on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go.
126 for Chris Kalaitis. opponent, Patrick the Hooligan, Hoolahan. Patrick Hoolahan says he lives the best life imaginable. He goes to the gym, then he hangs out with his family, then he does it again. Not only do young people recognize him now, older people, 60 and 70 year olds, they tell him kick butt and come over and have tea. That guy has finally made it. for Patrick Houlihan. All right, moving on now in the lightweight division, Jason Sago versus Paul, the Irish Dragon, Felder. Paul, the Irish Dragon, Felder, said he gets his nickname because he grew up in a tough Irish Catholic neighborhood in South Philly, and well, because he did traditional martial arts like karate and taekwondo. He makes his debut right here in Halifax. One fifty five for Paul Felder and his opponent, Jason Sago. Jason Sago fighting out of Toronto, Canada, was attending university and was hitting the boxing bag for a workout between classes when a friend invited him to do the karate Muay Thai class. Since then, he's been hooked. He's a brown belt under Hoyle Gracie. He's on a five fight win streak with five first round finishes. Look for him to get the job done quick. One fifty five for Jason Sago. All right, next up, we stay in the lightweight division. Olivier Obama Mercier versus Jake, the librarian, Lindsay. Jake Lindsay's job before he was a fighter, yeah, you guessed it, librarian. No, really, he said actually when he's not in the gym, you'll find him in the library. He is a self-proclaimed nerdy guy who loves to read. Six for Jake Lindsay. And introducing his opponent, Olivier Aubin Mercier. Alban Mercier was a finalist on Tough Nations at Welterweight. He moves back down to 155 for his UFC official debut. He's a well rounded fighter, but his judo is what stands out. He's a multiple time national medalist and was once a member of the Canadian national team. for Olivier Obama Mercier. And now we get 
to our featured prelim also in the lightweight division. Darren, Detroit superstar Crookshank versus Anthony, the assassin, and Joe Kuani. Anthony Njokwani was born in Nigeria and moved to the States in 1983. Stands six foot tall with a huge reach of 75 and a half inches. He has dynamic footwork and killer leg kicks. Trains with the great Saxon John Jair, who is a Muay Thai champion. Every time I think of Anthony Njokwani, I think of his knockout against Roger Bowling. He can finish his fight in one strike. for Anthony and Jokuani. And his opponent, Darren Crookshank. Darren Crookshank is known for those crazy kicks and for good reason. His mother was actually a professional kickboxer. His dad, also a martial artist. Darren keeps us up to date on Twitter. He said juicing is what he does during weight cut week. He even posted a picture of his juicer in his hotel bathroom. Welcome back to the studio. We have got six more fights for you this afternoon uh, to break down here. All these bouts can be seen tomorrow on Fox Sports 1, starting with Roman Salazar versus Mitch Gagnon. Salazar up first. Sometimes things. I like to read. That doesn't make me an author. Roman Salazar saw his friends fighting, decided he liked it, and now the guy's fighting in the UFC. He's won eight out of his last nine fights. He's finished five guys in the very first round. Talk about taking advantage of something that you just choose to like, right? I mean, I want to write a book, Karen. Yeah. I'd like to make video games. <laughs> Roman Salazar makes his UFC debut tomorrow night. Uh, what a story. 135. 135 for El Calito. And his opponent, please welcome Mitch Gagnon. Mitch has 10 of 11 of his wins coming by way of submission, guys, and he's taking on a man who is debuting tomorrow, so... Because he likes fighting. Yeah, because he <laughs> likes fighting. <laughs> 135. 135 for Mitch Gagnon! Mitch has a nasty left hook. Really look out for that tomorrow night in the fight. 70. He's won nine of his last 10 fights, too, coming in hot. Yeah. All right, moving on now to the welterweight division. Nordin Taleb versus Lee, the leech, Jing Leung. Lee, the leech, fighting out of Beijing, China, is a boxer and a wrestler, represents the China top team. He's one out of the two fighters from China top team representing his team in the octagon. He's very proud to be representing his team in the octagon, and it's really neat to see China making a presence in the octagon and in mixed martial arts. Look for him to put his heart on the line tomorrow. Comes to us with a jiu-jitsu brown belt as well, and a lot of Sanda experience too, so we're starting to see, like you're saying, a lot of the Chinese fighters now building up the repertoire and getting more well-rounded. Well, he fought the same night that I fought in May, mm -hmm. and this dude's got a chin on him. Yeah. Him and his opponent, they really put it on each other in the octagon. What? Very excited fight. One seventy. 170 
for the leech. That is a great nickname. That's awesome. But he just stands and punches. Not like he's grappling. <laughs> <laughs> His opponent, Nordine Taleb. Nordine Taleb said it was his brother who was his first martial arts coach, but he didn't compete back then. It was only once he moved to Montreal, joined TriStar Gym, took a few classes there, met Faraz Zahabi. Then he became a pro just two years later. So, of course, folks, that does mean he trains alongside Rory McDonald, who is fighting in our main event. Yeah, it's got to be great to have all those kinds of training partners and try start oh, gym. Yeah. There's so many guys there. Well, there's a void left now of UFC fighters in that gym with GSP. You may know the guy. He walking away. So, uh, Roar McDonald now is the man. And now Nardeem Taleb. 170. 170 for Nardeem Taleb. He's hoping to fill Rory's spot. Two guys sure. at 170 still. Just now Rory's elevated and he's coming into the gym to be the next guy. All right, next up, we've got a good one in the middleweight division. Elias the Spartan Theodoro versus Bruno Carioca Santos. Bruno Santos started training very early, like most Brazilians. He said he looks up to guys like Mark Coleman and John Fitch. Now, he has went the distance 13 times in his career. He has won 11 of his 15 by decision. Speaking of those wins coming by decision in an interview, Theodoro did say that he knows that this is a persistent man, a man who will sit on you and grind you. Stick to you, I mean, not sit on you. That's not what I meant to say. <laughs> but, you know, at times, maybe, DC, he'll, he'll just, he won't leave you alone. A very tenacious man. Well, his idols are John Fitch and Mark Coley. There you those go. are guys that were known for taking down their opponents and really controlling them. Uh, Coley was actually a little more versed in headbutting <laughs> whenever he was fighting back in the day. <laughs> 185 for Bruno Santos. And his opponent still undefeated, Elias Theodoro. Elias Theodoro, the guy that we talked about being on the cover of romance novels in the beginning. But then he stepped into the octagon at the Tough Nations finale as the underdog and just mowed through his opponent. He did it time and time again on the show. He's very, very aggressive. The, the, uh, the referee says to fight. Theodoro charges across the cage, gets on you, and beats people up. Look at him right here, taking a picture. Selfie. And listen, Karen, as a knock on our guy, Kenny Florian, he says, I have the best hair in mixed martial arts. I find it hard to argue with him. 185 for Elias Theodoro. I don't know if I'm feeling the side part that much, so I think Kenny's got something going for I think his hair's actually better than Kenny's. <laughs> Kenny couldn't, be, Kenny's on gonna have a word Kenny couldn't be on the cover of a romance novel. This will be fun. That actually will be a fun fight. Will be a fun fight. All right, moving on now to a feature bout in the lightweight division. Chad, the disciple of Breeze, versus Yost Dennis, the Pink Panther Sedano. Yo, Dennis Sedano actually fought my teammate Jared Sanders in the last fight. He got his first UFC win. But how about this for Sedano? His job before going into fighting, he was a gaucho at Texas Day Brazil, the Brazilian steakhouse that Karen and I, we've had dinner there. We have. We you all kept love it. yours very busy. <laughs> <laughs> he's been fighting for five years. He's a very well-rounded fighter, and he's very, very aggressive. He hurt Jared with the very first kick, finished the fight. Uh, very, very tough fighter. I cannot wait to see him in his third octagon appearance. And the next guy who also has a great haircut uh, in the Kenny Florian uh, Theodoro conversation, <laughs> I must say. You think? Oh, yeah. It's awesome. He could not be my gaucho there with that haircut. <laughs> <laughs> And his 
opponent is the Ultimate Fighter Nation's welterweight winner, Chad LaPree. Chad LaPree is 9-0. He's a lightweight who went up to welterweight to do Tough Nations. He won Tough Nations. Now he's dropping back down to lightweight. And of course, he also trains with the TriStar Gym. He looks to put his 10 years of experience to test. 155 for Chad LaPreeze. You see two guys from the Ultimate Fighter Nations that are actually going back down in weight today where they went in welterweight. Chad LaPreeze looks like a much different fighter on the scale at 155 than he did in the, fun in the finale. He looks much better at 155, much more comfortable. And now we get to the co-main event in the bantamweight division. Rafaela Sunsau versus Brian Kid Lightning Caraway. Brian Kid Lightning Caraway is a great grappler, one of the best in the bantamweight division. Loves the rear naked choke, has 17 wins by submission. He's 4-1 in his UFC career, but he says he's 5-0. And, oh. and you know what? He, In my opinion, he is 5-0. Oh. He fought Takeya Mitsugaki, lost a split decision, but I really think he did get the W in that fight, and he is in title contention if he wins this fight. I think he also does pretty well in the underdog position. 135 for Brian Caraway. And he wasn't supposed to beat Goyito, right? right? No, he wasn't. Hold it off. Exactly, I think he thrives off that. Rafael Asuncao, the guy that was the number one contender for the Bantamweight title. He gets hurt. In comes TJ Dillashaw. The whole division has changed around this man. This man needs to go out tomorrow night, make a statement, and tell everybody, I'm still here. Do not forget about me. He has all the skill to do that. Guys, remember, he does have a win over our champion, TJ Dillashaw. Rafael Asuncao is a very dangerous man. Brian Stan cannot stop praising him every time we are around him. He trains down in Atlanta. He believes that at some point, Asuncao will wear the belt. 135. 135 for Rafael Asuncao. Obviously, they weigh in the same, but it feels like Asuncao is going to be bigger tomorrow night. Well, as, as Gil said earlier, Asuncao has fought up as heavy as, as 155 pounds, so he's just really finding his weight division. All right, now it's time to take a closer look at the two men who will fight tomorrow night, five rounds if needed, in the welterweight division. Take a look. This just has all the makings of dynamite, Mike. Expect fireworks. Here we go, baby. I can beat Rory McDonald. I can beat Tarek Safadine. This fight will be exciting because you're getting two of the best welterweights in the world trapped in a cage, fighting for their shot at the belt. I practice my skills day in and day out, and I believe that I really just need to focus 100%, be 100% healthy, and I'll be very well prepared to fight one of the best fighters in the world. Every other time that the UFC's made uh, an appearance for the first time in a Canadian city, it's been explosive and electric, and I expect the same in Halifax. I think about Rory all day, every day, training on a train. He's in my mind 24-7. That's why I'm training super hard. In order to beat Rory McDonald, I need to impose my game. I have to impose my will, my will to win, and that's what I'm training to do. I visualize the victory, I visualize my training, and uh, I see myself having my, my hand raise in the fight. My job out there is to take the fight to him and break him. This may be it. Now Sapphine smells blood and water. Wow! Tarek Sapphine! I call out Rory McDonald because I believe I can beat him. And I want to prove that, you know, even though I'm kind of forgotten, that I'm still here and I still can beat the best. I don't really care if people call me out. I mean, I'm just trying to be champion and, and I could finish anybody in the world, including Tarek Sapphine. Fighter to the scale, Tarek 
Sponge Safadine. Terrence Safadine was the final Strike Force welterweight champion. I came through the Strike Force ranks with him. I saw this guy develop from a guy that could be taken down and controlled to a guy that can barely be taken down. If he's able to make this a primarily stand-up fight with Rory McDonald, Safadine will win. He's the better pure striker. He needs to force Rory to stand with him. 170 for Tarek Safadine. First Belgian in the UFC. Yeah, he, uh, he's an amazing fighter. He, he, really is. he needs to make him stand with him. He wins this fight. People should just Rory Google the pictures Harry's of Nate Marquardt's thigh if they're curious at how well Tarek kicks. Roy McDonald, 25 years old and already a UFC veteran, has 10 fights with the UFC. Get this, at 18, he was the Canadian King of the Cage lightweight champion. At 19, he was the King of the Cage world champion in the lightweight division. He's 7 of 8 for his last fights. Two big wins, one against Damian Maya, Tyrone Woodley. Um, this is his first five-round fight, but if he gets a W here, he'll be back in title contention. This is going to be a great fight, everybody. And really now is his time to shine that George St. Pierre is, is gone from the UFC. Yeah, and a lot to prove. You know, you know, coming from that loss, everyone had him up there. Now it's his chance. 170. 170 for Rory McDonald! He'll also be taking in a six-inch reach advantage tomorrow. Rory told us on UFC tonight that finally there is nothing to stop him but himself from reaching his goals. This is the first step to becoming a UFC welterweight champion. It is going to be a great fight. And like we said on UFC tonight as well, he's soft-spoken, doesn't say a lot outside the octagon, but once he's in there. Yeah, well, he's great and, and as a fighter, you, you learn a lot from your losses, and he's one of those guys that I think is going to learn a lot from his loss and reinvent himself. Let's set up an interview for him and Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> all right, with that, the main event is official. Thank you all so much for coming out. We hope to see you all right back here. All right, thanks very much, John Anik. Uh, guys, everybody made way.